Hi audience, I'm Yajun Ma. I will present our recent work about the SHOW-T2 imaging use a 3D double adiabatic inversion recovery prepared ultra-short echo time comb sequence. First, I will introduce the background of the SHOW-T2 imaging. Lots of tissues in human body have a relatively short T2 values, such as ligaments with T2 between 4 to 10 milliseconds, acclis tendon less than 2 milliseconds, meniscus between 5 to 8 milliseconds, and cortical bone less than 1 millisecond. However, conventional sequences such as GRE and FSE have a minimum echo time of several milliseconds. Thus, these short T2 tissues show little or no signals in conventional sequences. It is challenging to image the short T2 signals. First, short T2 signal decays very fast. An ultra-short echo time of the sequence is required. Second, short T2 components typically account for less than 10% of total signals, so SR is very limited. Third, long T2 signals are typically much stronger and last longer than short T2 signals. So long T2 separation is essential for high contrast short T2 imaging. The following approaches were employed for short T2 imaging. First, reduce echo time. An ultra short echo times between 8 to 100 microseconds have been achieved through the combination of half hour pulse, variable rate selective excitation, ramp sampling, and a fast transmit receive switching. Second, Long T2 separation. We included the following three conventional techniques here, including dual echo subtraction of resonance saturation contrast and uh, inversion recovery pulse and signal only. Third, reduce blurring. For short T2 imaging, spatial resolution rather than SNR is typically the limiting factor for clinical application. Therefore, the data acquisition time should be optimized for spatial resolution. The comparisons of UT acquisition and the conventional GRE sequence are shown here. The left image is from 2D GRE sequence with echo time of 3 milliseconds. Bone is completely dark. The middle one is UT imaging without long T2 separation. Bone has poor contrast because low water concentration. The right one is the same UT acquisition with a modified image contrast by changing window levels. The easiest way to get the bone contrast is to use dual echo subtraction method. Bone signal can be imaged using the first echo with ultra short echo time. No bone signals show up in the second echo image, so dual echo subtraction can highlight bone. However, the contrast between bone and marrow still moderate because fat signal is very strong and it has a relatively short T2 than muscle. Scared echo subtraction may help. However, to find a good scaling factor is always complicated and less robust. Utilizing the off resonance saturation to highlight short T2 signals is also very convenient. Short T2 components have broader spectrums than long T2 components. So short T2 signals can be partially saturated using a fluorescent saturation pulse without affecting the long T2 components. Then subtraction of non-saturated images by the saturated one. High short T2 contrast image can be obtained. However, only part of the short T2 uh, signals are highlighted and uh, this method can be invalid due to B0 homogeneity. Single inversion recovery prepared UT sequence is more efficient to suppress long T2 tissues. Long T2 tissues are inverted and partially nulled when data acquisition around the signal nulling point. In comparison, the short T2 components are saturated after IR pause and recover immediately, so high short T2 contrast can be obtained. However, this technique is hard to fully suppress long T2 tissues with two or more T1 values. Our purpose in this study is to design a DIR preparation module to robustly suppress long T2 components with a broad range of T1s, and to apply the 3D DIR UT cones techniques to healthy volunteers on a 3D scanner of fast volumetric short T2 imaging. 
and to measure the T2 star of short T2 components use the 3D DR UT cone sequence. The following are the materials and the methods section. Here is the proposed 3D DIR UT cone sequence. It uses two adiabatic inversion pulses for long T2 separation, followed by high efficiency cone data acquisition. In the basic 3D UT cone sequence, a short T2 rectangular pulse is used for signal excitation followed by 3D spiral sampling with a nominal T of 32 microseconds. The spiral trajectories are arranged with cardinal wheel ordering. To speed up data acquisition, multiple spokes can be sampled after each DIR preparation. This is an example illustrating how the magnetizations of fat, muscle, and cardio bone change during DIR prepared UT sequence. This fat has a short T1 around 340 millisecond compared with muscle, which has a T1 of around 1400 milliseconds at 3D. The fat signal recovers much faster than that of muscle after the first IR pulse. The magnetization of fat demonstrates a higher degree of inversion compared with muscle immediately after the second IR pulse. As a result, it is possible that both fat and muscle magnetizations go through the nulling point simultaneously with an appropriate choice of TI2. The saturated cortical bone magnetization starts to recover after the second IR pulse, and it recovers very fast due to a short T1. High signal and contrast signal images of cortical bone will be generated when data acquisition near the nulling point. The signal expressions of both short and long T2 components can be merged together. Q1 and Q2 are inversion efficiency factors of the two adiabatic inversion pulses. For long T2 tissues, Q1 and Q2 are equal to minus 1. For short T2 tissues, Q1 and Q2 are 0. Signal equation of each box is shown in equation 1. The final signal intensity for multiple spoke acquisition is the magnetization averaging of the multi-spoke acquisitions. A general framework to minimize signals from long T2 tissues for the DIR prepared sequence is expressed in equation 6. With long TR, excitation flip angles, spoke duration, spoke number, and the TIs of long T2 tissues, the optimal TI1 and TI2 can be determined using this framework. As can be seen from the simulations, both fat and muscle signals are nulled. Long T2 tissues with T1s below or above bone T1 are also well suppressed, suggesting that the DIR preparation can provide efficient long T2 suppression with reduced T1 dependency. The short T2 bone signal curve is also plotted together with fat and muscle for comparison. An oil saline bone phantom was made to investigate the feasibility to know weight of oil and saline simultaneously. Assuming T1s of oil and saline at 3T are 340 milliseconds and 3 seconds, the calculated optimal TI1 and TI2 are 100 milliseconds and 45 milliseconds, or a TR of 200 milliseconds. Then the proposed 3D DRUT cone sequence was used for in vivo imaging, including tibia, knee, and uh, ankle imaging. T1s of fat and muscle at 3T used here are 340 milliseconds and 1400 milliseconds. For tibia bone imaging, the calculated optimal TI1 and TI2 are equal to the phantom for a TR of 200 milliseconds. For both knee and ankle joint imaging, the calculated TI1 and TI2 are 150 milliseconds and 64 milliseconds respectively for a TR of 300 milliseconds. The results of both phantom and in vivo experiments show as following. These images show the bone phantom results. Conventional clinical 3D GRE sequence cannot detect cortical bone, but high signal from oil and water. The regular 3D UT cone sequence shows some signals from cortical bone, but poor contrast due to high signals from both oil and water. With the proposed 3D DRUT cone sequence, signals from oil and water are almost completely nulled, creating very high contrast for cortical bone. 
fitting all the 3D DRR UTE config images with different echo times ranging from 32 microseconds to 800 microseconds demonstrated a short T2 star of 0.35 milliseconds for ball one cortical bone. This figure shows the in vivo TBA results. The DRR UTE cone sequence shows high signals from the cortex of the TBA mid shaft with near zero signals from both muscle and marrow fat. Tendons and coil elements also show as high signals. This figure shows the in vivo knee results. The DRR UTE cone sequence shows high signals from uh, femur, tibia, and patella bones, tendons, with near zero signals from both muscles and marrows. Excellent fitting are also obtained for these short T2 components. These are the in vivo ankle joint results. The DRUT cone sequence show high signals from the tibial middle shaft and uh, Achilles tendons. Table 1 summarizes the mean and standard deviation of T2 star values for cortical bone, patella tendon, and Achilles tendon for three healthy volunteers. As can be seen, very consistent T2 star values were observed for those short T2 tissues in vivo, which further confirms the robustness of the DR technique in expressing long T2 signals. Our proposed 3D DRUT cone sequence can be used for bond water T1 mapping since DR preparation can better suppress pore water in cortical bone than single IR method. The proposed 3D DRUT cone sequence can also be used for myelin T1 mapping since DR preparation can better suppress long T2, white matter, and gray matter in brain. Summarized our study and made conclusions that 3D UT cone sequence is a highly efficient sequence providing fast volumetric short T2 imaging. The DR preparation provides robust suppression of long T2 components with a broad range of T1s. Multi-spoke acquisitions per DR preparation accelerates the scan significantly. Accurate T2 star measurement of short T2 components including bond water in cortical bone, patella tendon, and uh, Achilles tendon. There are still some limitations in this study. First, the efficiency of the 3D DRUT cone sequence in terms of SNR and CNR per unit acquisition time have not been evaluated and compared with existing techniques such as single IR UT technique. Second, the 3D DRUT cone sequence has only been investigated in imaging short T2 tissues in MSK system. Third, the image resolution of the short T2 images in this study were relatively low. Fast 3D acquisition with acceleration techniques such as parallel imaging or compressed sensing can be used for high-resolution short T2 imaging. Thanks for your attention.